<laughs> okay, so getting back to our where we were. So we have this proton transfer where we now have water as a nuclear. And so this is one of those, once again, one of these things where we have uh, a average equilibrium that shifted towards this because this is a reactor intermediate. So in this case, when we do this, these little rare electrons can kick out water. to give us our protonated ester. And of course, the water we form can just grab this proton to regenerate the acid catalyst and give us our product. Every step is in the equilibrium. And just to uh, do it again, if you take a carboxylic acid in acidic methanol, so H plus and methanol, there will be a mechanism in which we protonate the carbonyl, allowing methanol to attack. They give us a, a, a acetal-like intermediate uh, with three OHs, and then we do a proton transfer between the methanol and one of the OHs, to give us a water, this is going to be a pretty average equilibrium, maybe about one or two based on pKa's. But in this case, now this can pick up water as a leaving group and give us an ester, protonated ester, and then the water that left in the previous step can grab this proton, regenerating our acid and giving us our product as a carboxylic acid. This reaction is incredibly, incredibly reversible. So. Oh, ah, ah. Let me erase this, sorry. I'm surprised no one was screaming at me. They give us our methyl ester. Is that better? I was trying to be slick and go around and stake around the board and go to the equation I had drawn out. I drew it the wrong direction. So, one more time, we've thrown in a carboxylic acid, methanol adds in, acetyl, proton transfer, protonated ester, deprotonation of a protonated ester by the water formed in this step gives us our ester. Okay? So I, sorry about that, I caught myself. Uh, so carboxylic acids enter acidic methanol you will get the methyl ester out. That is one of the best ways to make methyl esters or any ester, is use the alcohol you want to add in as the solvent, and use the Chartley-A's and HVL catalysis to drive it from the carboxylic acid to the methyl ester. So what if we want to go from the methyl ester to the carboxylic acid? Can we do this using HVO and what? Can we? So we know we can go carboxylic acid to ester using HCl and water, or HCl and methanol, or some kind of water and methanol. Can we? Deep, can we go from a methyl ester So if I tell you this mechanism is incredibly reversible, do you think we can take a methyl ester in water and acid and go back to the carboxylic acid? Yes. Absolutely. Is the mechanism already on the board? Absolutely. It's ester, protonate ester, water adds in, proton transfer, they make NaOH plus, methanol falls off, we have our carboxylic acid. Uh, so highly, highly reversible. So whenever I ask a question like this, first ask yourself, what's the solvent? Is it, is it an alcohol, which will give us the ester? Or is it a water, 
which will give us the acid. And while you can use HCl and water to deprotect the esters, people don't use it to do that. They just use the Fischer esterification to do a sterification, so make the ester. So how do we make the carboxylic acid from the ester if the HCl, if the, if the acid catalyzed conditions are okay but not the best? Well, that's what saponification is. Anyone know what saponification is just from like historical things? Or maybe someone really liked Bike Club? What? Yeah, yes. Spontification is used to make soap. In Fight Club, they take, uh, you know, fatty acid lipids and they. So basically, historically, what spontification is, and this will lead into the next mechanism, is you take. You take some sort of lipid. And here's an example of some lipid that people might be interested in. So here's a, uh, here's a phosphatidyl lipid. So you may have seen this in biochemistry or something similar in biochemistry. These side chains. Uh, can differ, but for what I want to talk about, it doesn't matter what the side chains are. The key thing about these lipids is that these lipids are uh, ester bonds. So lipids, so the things that make up our cell walls are primarily made out of ester, is it something funny? Alright, sorry, I stopped giggling, so. Uh, so esters make up lipids. lipids or esters. So in Phycla, or spontification, they took all of the fatty esters from the liposuction clinic and they saponified it. So you know there's this famous scene where they're doing it and Brad Pitt's character takes Ed Norton's character and puts the, uh, the powder on his hand and as they come on to slip with it and is it, you know, they were saying acid, it was actually a base burn. So that was lye. Lye is all, you know, sodium hydroxide is very similar to lye. So pretty much in that scene, what they were doing was they were saponifying fatty esters to the carboxylic acid using sodium hydroxide. To get long carbon chain, in this case it would be two equivalents of the long carbon chain, plus the alcohol portion. So, what it turns out is if you, if you have an ester and you want to go to your carboxylic acid or oxalate, the best way to do it equilibrium wise is via basic conditions. Uh, and just to be really, 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 really graphic, if you want to say, well, how we, what's the best way to make a carboxylic, to make a carboxylic acid from an ester, just think bike club. Uh, and when you think of the conditions, the stuff that burned Ed Norton's hand, sodium hydroxide, is what we use. And this is, and this possibly is used to, used to make soap. You know, uh, what are soaps? Soaps are detergents. What properties do detergents have to have for those who are taking biochemistry? Polar group. Yes, they have to have a polar head group and a, a non-polar uh, tail. 
And so here's a very polar head doing the carboxylic acid and a non-polar tail and the alkane chain. So these are great detergents. These are great soaps. So what's the mechanism of this?
So pretty much, there's no reason, based on everything we know about nucleophilic acyl substitutions, that this can't attack this. Or there's no reason this can't go back into this, right? Or maybe, what would it be easier for this to do? For this to add back into the carbon, you know, give us this intermediate? Or for this to grab the proton? It's going to be easier to grab the proton, right? As the base chemistry is almost always easier than nucleophilic electrophile chemistry. All right, so by this grabbing the proton, what that does is this gives it to the car carboxylate. And we know the carboxylate is going to be very hard for, for another nucleophile to add into, right? What's one of the least nucleophilic carbonyls we talked about earlier around in the class? One of the least nucleophilic ones. We, I, we mentioned this at least three or three times in this class. When we're talking about the order of electrophiles.